Hey everybody, today we're going to be looking at just a couple more things with the new version of Logic 10.5. There's a couple things which I didn't realize were there because they weren't listed. At least I couldn't find them in the release notes. But we're going to look at those today. And also we're going to do a little bit more with the quick sampler. And using the slice mode, how each of the different sections can be triggered with MIDI. So that is the project time expands or if you speed it up or slow it down that those little pieces will expand or contract as well using the flex time so that's these things right here how we can do that and also we're going to just overview one more time the kind of the power and why we might want to use this thing at all so this particular plugin this instrument is incredible and it's going to be a huge addition for a lot of people in their workflow. So let's dive in and take a look at that particular instrument. Okay, so let's start by looking at one feature, which was in the previous version of Logic, but has been updated. It wasn't really mentioned because there's other ways to do this now. But we're just going to pull this out into one of our tracks here. And let's go back to the beginning. So we have this beat. We'll import the tempo for now, uh, just using one of the Apple loops. Now, in previous versions, we had convert to new sampler track, and we still have this, except it's been expanded. Now we have the same regions or transient markers, but we can pull this into sampler, drum machine designer, or alchemy. It could also be a one-shot zone if we want. doesn't have to be. There's the name, and here are the notes that we trigger on. Now, we could do this uh, in any of these. This is essentially what the previous one was with Sampler or the EXS24 before. Drum Machine Designer pulls this on to each of the pads, but still splits it either at the transients or the regions. Or we can take it into Alchemy, and that uses some of the more advanced synthesis techniques. So, just as an example, let's pull this into Drum Machine Designer. And you're going to see it's creating it. Just like that. Okay, so what's the difference then between this and the other version we have of that, which is down here? So let's pull this into Drum Machine Designer. It's going to do a similar thing. It's going to put it all in there. It actually sounds a little bit higher quality. That's probably because it's set to one shot and I didn't have that set on the other one. So in reality, this whole drag over here, what we're doing is this is the convert to sampler track option. I mean, it's, they're one and the same now. This one we actually can decide a little bit more, but they're one and the same for the most part. This new functionality is replacing that even though it's still there. So let's take this one into the quick sampler, which is what we're going to look at a little bit more today. because we want to look at the slices here and how those work. And I don't, there we go. There's, oh, I didn't want to add one. So we have, so here's on my keyboard. And that's been all sliced up so we can trigger it with each of these notes right here. Now, we're not getting too deep into the quick sampler today. I am going to make a whole video on this because I think this is an amazing tool, but I'm going to use it some more and actually create some stuff with it first. What I wanted to look at today primarily was just the follow tempo. So that way, when we slow this down, and we can actually pull that down, I believe. Let's check that out. So making this into 
the uh, quick sampler didn't give us all the MIDI data like we got with the other option. But we can just use that same thing if we want to and create it so it'll play. We can do it that way, sure. And now, because we have the flex turned on and follow tempo, let's take this down to 30. Hear how it's expanding it, even if it's poorly, to fill out. I mean, we slowed that down a lot. We could have just gone down, you know, 90 or something. It doesn't leave any gaps or anything. So this function is going to be really important if you're going to be adjusting the tempo all the way through that. Now, the other thing with the uh, doing this with the drum machine designer is that we when we come in here, because we imported that in, we do have this on the step sequencer. So we can come through, see which one is these. Oh, I have it muted, that's why. Let's unsolo. So there's that same one. Now, because it's cut up from a sample, it's not going to follow any specific order except for the order of the actual original file. So now we could, if we wanted to, come through here, create whatever pattern we want using that file that we imported in. And we could be doing different note repeats and everything in here. Okay, so here's this one right there. Let's solo that one out. So now this file that we just took from our Apple Loops, we can program into an entirely new fresh beat. I think in many ways, this allows us to just reuse and recycle things which may we may not like how they were originally, or maybe they're just stale, or, or perhaps it's something that uh, you have some old files around, but you want to give new life to them. This is a great way to do that. In the same way, because we have this now with the quick sampler, we can do a lot of that too by adjusting and programming with these notes that we have here. So we can program those however we want. Let's just pull that out of the way for a second. Now we'll leave it here for one moment. You'll notice we don't have uh, the actual step sequencer for this. We can pull that down. Let's pull this one back up into the drum machine designer for a second. So just off the bat, it's a lot easier to use this beat and time stretch it inside the quick sampler. Although because the drum machine designer does use similar technology, it's not to say that we can't do that. It's just going to require us to make some other adjustments here. So for instance, I can come through and say, I want this one to follow the tempo, but you'll see the next one I'd have to turn it on for each one individually. Whereas in the quick sampler, I have the same sounds and I can use the step sequencer there. It's just a region that fits onto any one of the tracks. Just like that. 
And speaking of that, let's do a new track here. Well, not that one. Let's do a new instrument track. Yeah, it's going to show up like that. Let's do, for instance, just anything that's not a drummer. And pull that down. So that's not a place where you would normally think of doing a step sequencer, but we can use that on any of the tracks. Okay, so this has been a look at really the quick sampler a little bit more, talking about the ways we get into it, the ways we can trigger those notes with MIDI, the ways to turn on the flex so that it time shifts with our overall project tempo. That's what I wanted to cover today, just looking more and more in depth into this and how these features replace what we had with Convert to Sampler Track. Okay, that's it. Another video tomorrow. We're working on a couple more, just looking at some of these new features. I hope you're enjoying these. And uh, we'll uh, just probably have probably three or four more before we get back to business as usual.